So I've got my same watering system set up. It's coming from the house faucet and it's being split off in two ways. One comes to this no weed garden and one goes out there to the other no weed garden. And it's on a timer. And you can see here the wet ground from, well it's probably about 8 o'clock now and it came on at 7. So I'm going to take you and show you, I've pretty much got it done now, of the tomato area. You can see that they're all set up and all of them are strung. They had a, I had a difficulty in the beginning with these because before this windbreak was up back here, um, it would create like, I don't know, some kind of vortex. For some reason, the wind would just whip through here, around the shed and through here and just did, it wreaked havoc. And that, I had, we had a major um, thunderstorm came through and it just absolutely set me way back on these plants because I just planted them like two days before. And so it snapped them all off. My tomatoes should actually be a lot bigger than this. But, um, I replanted, not in here, but I, I re-sowed replacement plants for these and by the time that they were big enough, I do have a few of them like down here, but by the time they were big enough, these had already started growing out from the broken stems. So I did recover most of them, um, which is good news. And then we had a real cold snap, that didn't do it any good. So let me just, uh, you, you kind of get a general feel for how this is going on now. You got the, like I probably mentioned before, this is quite a bit longer than the last time I recorded, but you get a T-post there with the EMT and it goes up to 550 paracord stretched across them with the T's and the tomatoes are supported with individual little strings, tomato twine. And then as they grow, I wrap them around the tomato twine. Each one is anchored to the drip line. It's not, there's not a force lifting up really on it. It's just to provide an anchor so it doesn't slip. And then I wrap it around. This is going to be the site of a new tomato no weed garden. One that I can closely monitor. One that's a good bit away from the deer and coons. So uh, this is where I'm going to plant my pro tomato projects I'm working on uh, for vegetable breeding. It was going to be a hydroponic, outdoor hydroponic system, but I'm just so swamped with everything that I, I can't get around to it this year. But I do have the stuff to do it, and I'll probably do it next year. This is behind a winter grow room, if you didn't know that already. And all this is going to become this part of the Novi Garden. <clears throat> Along the fence here I have grapes. Some of them have died off, some of them have been, been neglected. Over there I've got, <coughs> excuse me, a little winded. I've got blueberry bushes. And here is the first part of the Novi Garden on this side, the new no wee garden. And um, I'm going to add to it this area right here tomorrow. It's, so I use my stakes. I have it wrapped around, I have tomato twine wrapped around these stakes, a couple of them. You can see here, these have actually been in use for ever since I built my pond. It's been a few years but they've come in handy for making straight rows and gardening and other things and I used them again in this situation. As you can see there. I've got a tape measure here and you can see little holes along the tape measure. It's every 12 inches. I took uh, this PVC 
dibber, I guess, is what is the best term for it. And I'm knocking in holes every 12 inches. Once that's done, I can remove the string. And then we'll make the holes a little bigger and then go to plant. I also have to put in the drip tape. It's not really drip tape, drip hose. It's going to go underneath it. We'll do it in phases. But right now, um, my seedlings over there are quite large and they need to get planted. all the spots for the tomatoes. This is going to be almost entirely tomatoes. There may be some peppers behind me. Um, normally I would put in the um, not soaker hose but the um, drip irrigation line under the landscape fabric. Now and uh, and put the t-posts up as well but i'm missing part i don't have quite enough from last year left over to do all of this so i've got some on order and it's not due in for a little while so i'm kind of having to do it out of order and i guess that's what you do in gardening you do the best you can with what you have but i've got um, T-posts that I'm going to put up, I'm going to drill down about every 10 to 15 feet, and then I'm going to make a, an extension off the T-post. I'll show you that in a little while. It'll be quickly for you guys, uh, but it'll be a few days, if not a week or more for me. But yeah, that's the way I'm going to grow. I'm going to string them up from these little spots here. nursery fabric, landscaping fabric, whatever you want to call it. This thing will make short work of the ground right now because it's wet. Makes a nice hole there really quick, so much quicker than using a spade, a handheld spade or something like that. Here's the cucumbers all planted. They're planted on a cloudy day so they can harden off some. They're also planted low so the roots get close to the hole so they can get into underneath this plastic here and root uh, in the ground below. There's no cover uh, from the three quarter inch or three inch hole on the bottom of these containers now so they can reach down into the ground below. Also provides a wall against side winds which is really important when they're young and brittle and uh, that prevents the wind from getting down in there and, and uh, breaking them over and uh, killing them off. So I've got four of these here, 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 and here on the plastic. And we're going to wrap those. I may or may not take one of the two from each one depending on how they grow. We'll see. So this is the new no weed area here. And you can see I've done similarly. I've got peppers, three different kinds of peppers, including the hybrid cross of Cali, California brine and lipstick and California brine and Palmyra. And I've also got next generation Matoya eggplant grown in here. And every other space is a little tomato plant. And I'm going to grow the tomato plants 
horizontally along the cages as well. That way I can use the pepper, uh, pepper cages and eggplant cages for a second purpose. So that's it. You can see I have some extras down there and over here and over here. So I'll just leave those growing for a while and we'll see how these do before I uh, get rid of those. It's always a shame to get rid of good pepper plants <laughs> and tomato plants. It's been raining like crazy and it starts sprinkling again. I had to run and go get the camera to document some of this. A little earlier than I'd originally planned. But I've got the tape measured here. I've got the tomato little tomato plants growing and they need to be trellised up. So about every nine feet I put a T-post here. And I'm going to do the trellis that I've used a few times here. If you don't have one of these and you're driving T-Post, you need to get one. It's worth the $35 or $40. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> so, yeah, I got some beautiful tomatoes that need to be trellised up. So the first thing is the T-Post. All right, I took a 10-foot piece of EMT, 3 quarter inch and I attached it to each one of these six foot T-posts that I drove in the ground about a foot and a half and they're tied on with 550 paracord the T's on, I've got the 550, it's called 550 cord because it's 550 pound test so that should easily handle the weight of the tomatoes the only issue could be the weight's going to be pulling down for the most part except on the ends where it could be pulling this way a little bit that's the point of the t-posts and why they're braced but you'll notice that i have it tied off here it goes up and all the way across and i have it a trucker's hitch on the other end that i can cinch up and it pulls the whole thing tight because it's sitting on top of uh, loosely it's not tied to each T uh, fitting PVC T but if you look there closely you can see let me see if I can first time using a zoom you can see how the 550 cord sitting on top of the T post I mean the uh, EMT well that could cut into it over time so what I have to do is I have to take a screw lift that T up some and put a screw through it so that's still something to do. All the T's elevated and screwed in place so the 550 cord doesn't get cut as it weighs and the wind blows and stuff like that. So I've got all five lengths here done. I started hanging tomato twine from it and now I have to put the tomatoes, well I have to string the tomatoes. <laughs> They're starting to get big. I've got a lot of little tomatoes all over them and um, they seem to be recovering really well from the extreme weather we had. The high high winds that, that broke off a lot of them after I planted and then the frost that did a lot of damage. Can't remember if I've mentioned that before. So as you'll see the containers there, um, obviously from the way the tomatoes and even the peppers over here look, They've already reached down into the ground underneath. I need to add some more uh, medium in there, which is aged rice holes and um, uh, peat moss need from last year actually growing out in the other new weed garden. But I need to add that in there now that they're taller and that'll help weigh down the pot too. Um, not really needed, but I think it'll help um, a little bit by doing it. So I'm gonna do that. So yep, need to get busy stringing the tomatoes.